Hey everyone, and welcome to Logic Talks. My name is Blake Grubbs. I'm the head of marketing at Logic.io, and I'll be hosting Logic Talks to bring you interviews with experts in the quote to cash space, in sales, and in the digital commerce space as well, to hopefully share some of their expertise with you. Really excited to share all of this with you. Hope you enjoy. Well, really excited for this episode of Logic Talks. Today we have Erwan Carabo on the show. Uh, from Salesforce. Erwan is the Senior Director of Product Management at Salesforce, focused on quote to cash and CPQ. Uh, Erwan, thank you for joining us. Uh, wanted to just pass it to you to start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your role at Salesforce and your experience in the quote to cash and, and CPQ space. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Blake. And uh, thank you for, uh, for having me today. Really excited about this. Um, yeah, so my name is Erwan Kirebel. I'm um, I would qualify myself as a, a CPQ veteran. I've been in the CPQ industry for uh, more than 20 years now. I, I started my career in this space right after college. Um, started developing a, a 3D visual configurator in the uh, in the early 2000s, and then uh, you know I stayed in the CPQ space ever, ever since. So uh, I've worked with with, uh, with a few vendors uh, in that space um, uh, in a in a few different roles. Right? So I. I I was a, a solution architect uh, at the beginning of my career and then moved on to uh, sales engineering. I, I spent a lot of years in, uh, in sales engineering and sales engineering management uh, for you know, uh, CPQ uh, companies uh, and then joined Salesforce uh, three years ago. Um, and I joined this team called the Revenue Cloud Solution Team. So Revenue Cloud is uh, the umbrella name, the brand name for uh, uh, CPQ and billing and, and with a, a third product that we launched um, uh, very recently that's called subscription management. And my role within the team is uh, you know, kind of to act as a, a not bond uh, product manager. Uh, so sharing the vision with our customers uh, and most importantly, maybe uh, ensuring that our customers are successful with our products. All right, so I spend a lot of time with our customers, um, making sure that you know, they implement best practices with, uh, with our solution, uh, making sure that they get the right level of support and making sure that our partner ecosystem as well is able to support them accordingly as well. Great. Thank, thanks for that background, Erwan. And, and like you said, because you are really focused on that, those customer interactions and as an outbound product manager, really what we wanted to focus on chatting with you today um, and considering your experience at a few different players in the space now um, is talking about kind of what the best practices are um, and pitfalls to avoid for companies who are evaluating CPQ, who are evaluating quote to cash solutions, uh, either for the first time or who have had the same solution for a, quite a while and who are looking to make a change to kind of future-proof their business going forward. So I, so I guess to start, we'll start broadly here. You know, for companies looking to invest in, in a CPQ platform now, like I said, for the first time or for the first time in a long time, you know, what would you say are kind of some of the key considerations that they should make when beginning their evaluation and when seeking out solutions that are best fit for their business? Yeah, so I mean, um, you know, evaluating CPQ solutions is, is not easy. Uh, uh, and one of the reasons why it's not easy is that uh, CPQ solutions have evolved and, and now are becoming I mean, very similar in terms of capabilities, right? There are a lot of table stakes, uh, you know, things like um, you know, the ability to create a product catalog, the ability to define bundles, the ability to define rules, uh, ability to implement uh, complex pricing strategies, ability to go through approvals, uh, generate documents, send data to backend systems, right? Pretty much all of the CPQ solutions have, you know, very decent capabilities in, in those areas. And, and by just looking at demos, uh, you know, you can, you can feel like, you know, what you're seeing in demos is very similar from one vendor to the other. Uh, so what I would encourage uh, people evaluating CPQ to do is really go beyond uh, those uh, table stakes, go beyond those uh, key capabilities and ask yourselves, right? You know, how am I going to administer uh, this solution? How am I going to hire uh, the right people to implement uh, those solutions? How am, I, how am I going to train my people? How am I, how am I going to uh, keep keep them updated? How am I going to ensure that they have the right level of expertise? Right? Those are those are key considerations. I think that are very important uh, when evaluating uh, CPQ solutions. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, you know, think integration as well, right? Uh, CPQ solutions are, are never standalone solutions. So people often think about, you know, who oh, am I going to integrate this with my CRM? Or am I going to integrate this with my uh, ERP solution? But also, 
Uh, I think people need to now uh, think more holistically about the value sources of revenue, right? Not all the revenue comes through the conversion of quotes into orders, right? You might have uh, ongoing uh, run rate type of relationship with, with your customers with you know, things like pricing agreements. So maybe you will get orders that do not necessarily come from uh, the conversion of, of, uh, of quotes, for example. Maybe you have also service contracts with the customers, right? That's another source of revenue as well that, that you need to have a quoting solution for. And then you, you, know, think about, you need to think as well about other channels, right? The, the sales uh, channel is not the only channel you have dealers as well, right? So how is your CPG solution going to work uh, to address the needs of your of your channel partners? Or how can I leverage what I'm going to implement in CPQ in order to expose uh, a product catalog, in order to expose a configurator and pricing capabilities to the outside world in the sales service channels, for example. Uh, the other thing as well that, that's critical, uh, I think, uh, is uh, whatever solution you choose, um, at some point there will be gaps, right? There, there is not a single solution out there that will address 100% of your requirements out of the box. At some point there will be gaps. Uh, and it's very important to evaluate how you are going to address those gaps. Are you gonna have to rely on a third party partner who's gonna develop you know, some, some custom code in order to, to address those gaps? Or can you have the expertise internally to address some of those gaps and be able to complement your CPK solution to address some of the very specific use cases that you probably have? Yeah, that's that's interesting on that last point in particular. It kind of goes into my next question. Like you said, uh, every platform that you have uh, or any platform that you choose, there's going to be certain gaps that you need to fill in. And there's kind of been the, the ongoing conversation around, you know, build versus buy, not just with CPQ in general, but with kind of those additions and those augmentations that, that you need to make to your, uh, to your CPQ platform. And what would your advice be to buyers, you know, to go a little bit further on that, on evaluating that build versus buy decision that they have to make? Yeah, you know, I, I really don't think that, that the build versus buy question is a, is a question that, that people should be asking themselves anymore uh, in the CPQ space, at least. Um, it has evolved, right? If you, if you look at CPQ solutions, you know, from a, from a long time ago, right, 20 years ago, uh, CPQ was created to address, you know, very narrow uh, use cases uh, in manufacturing. Uh, and CPQ solutions, CPQ solutions were very good at addressing those, you know, very narrow use cases. And if you had a use case that was outside of that uh, narrow envelope, then you know it was worthwhile to you know ask yourself whether you could be you know building something that would be a more fit for purpose uh, solution. Uh, but CPQ solutions have evolved uh, tremendously, and, and now I don't think there's any single industry that is not addressed uh, by CPQ solutions. So I don't think that nowadays, uh, you know, with the state of you know where CPQ, CPQ solutions are on the market, I don't think that it's worthwhile taking the risk of building something. Uh, because by building something, you are, you are taking a huge risk uh, in terms of maintainability of your solution, uh, in terms of evolution of your platform, uh, in terms of flexibility as well, right? You, you're going to build something to address a need that you have today, but, you know, those needs are going to change, right? And, you know, I'll give you an example, right? Companies in the manufacturing space, right, uh, develop, you know, CPQ solutions rather the needs that, that they have today. And what if they have to what if that's what is he uh, detects them to launch a new offer, right? For example, a subscription type of offer, right? Their CPQ solution that they've built is probably not a fit for this need anymore, right? So they're going to have to uh, um, uh, take care of that, uh, that liability and, 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 uh, and, and spend a lot of investment in order to uh, make that system evolve. Um, so, so again, yeah, in a, in a, you know, in a summary, uh, why I think you know, a few years ago, that, that question was a very valid question. Uh, I don't think that now there's anything that will justify uh, taking the risk of, of building a CPQ solution. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing you just mentioned there as well, you mentioned companies like manufacturing companies. Um, and you mentioned earlier, right, there is no, you know, there's a bunch of different CPQ solutions on the market, particularly for companies that have, you know, more sophisticated or more advanced uh, and more configurable type of products, right? Like manufacturing, as you mentioned, medical device, high tech, things like that, especially considering kind of the very uh, accelerated evolution of products that is kind of happening within those companies. Um, what are some of those, what are some additional considerations you'd make for companies in those industries in particular, where they have a really specific business with specific needs and, and somewhat more advanced needs than maybe 
a typical uh, system would be able to to handle? What what would you kind of uh, say to those types of businesses yeah. evaluating solutions? Yeah, so yeah, so if we look at, at companies in, in those in those industries, right, uh, manufacturers of uh, complex equipment, manufacturer of um, high tech equipment or, or medical equipment, right? Those are typically you know very complex pieces of equipment. Uh, right, I, you know I've, I've seen customers that have uh, products with you know thousands of you know possible options to choose from, right? And, and sometimes even more, and, and thousands or tens of thousands of rules uh, that dictate you know what components you can you can assemble with uh, another base machine, for example, right? You add on top of that. You know regulations that become more and more complex, right? Especially in the medical equipment space, for example, where you know in some countries you might be able to sell uh, an option that might not be available to sell in another country, for example, uh, right? And you add on top of that uh, the volumes as well, right? If you if you can figure um, a piece of equipment like this, you are going to end up with bill of materials uh, that are going to be you know starting to get you know very significant, right? So when when you implement uh, a configurator uh, in those industries, you always have to think about, you know, I think, you know, three key objectives, right? You have to think about uh, the implementation and the maintenance of those configuration models. Uh, you have to think about uh, the user experience, right? When you when you have a sales rep configuring, you know, such a complex machine, it's important that we think about his experience, uh, and we have to think about the performance as well, right? We we are dealing with you know, huge models with a huge number of rules, huge number of options, huge number of uh, components in the bill of materials. So we have to think about performance and we cannot accept any compromise, right? If, if, if you wanna have a project that's successful, uh, performance needs to be good, it needs to be uh, maintainable and you have to have a, a, a top-notch uh, user experience for your sales reps. Uh, so you have to choose a, a, a CPQ solution that can handle uh, this complexity with the right level of performance. And you have to, I mean, you know, if, if you think about the person who's building those models, right? Building a model is, is, is almost a knot, right? The modeler has to think about those key objectives that I, that, I, that I mentioned. And you have to give them have the right tools, the right capabilities in order to let them make the right decisions, the right design decisions in order to achieve those goals. Um, so really, uh, again, you know, think about performance, ease of creation, maintenance, user experience, and have, you know, have the right tool that allow you to reach those goals. Yeah, that's that's great advice. And and one thing that you hit on there and you hit on earlier too is is really considering the administration and the ongoing maintenance of uh, of your CPQ solution because that can be so resource intensive. Um, my question for you would be, how can you make sure that uh, during the implementation process? You mentioned that earlier as well. You know what makes a successful implementation for CPQ? What are some of the biggest you know, mistakes you might see companies make when, you know, choosing, you know, when beginning that implementation process and when setting themselves up for, you know, really the years and years to come of how their CPQ solution will be, uh, will be put together. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, you know, like for any uh, technology uh, change initiative, uh, I think the biggest mistake is probably, you know, thinking that technology is everything. Right. And, and, and we still see too many companies uh, who implement CPQ without uh, using this uh, initiative as an opportunity to rethink uh, their business processes. Right? And as a result of that, we see too many companies still you know, trying to lift and shift uh, previous implementations uh, and just taking what's been implemented before and thinking that you know, the change of technology is gonna solve all of the issues they had uh, in their previous uh, implementation. And, and lift and shift, you know, types of implementation will lead to compromises in terms of, you know, user experience, uh, creation, the maintenance of the models and the performance, right? Which is really absolutely not what we want to do, right? We, we need to have an implementation that's focusing on the end user experience. Uh, we need to make sure that we have the end user in mind uh, in order to really, you know, keep those, uh, uh, keep those goals in mind. Uh, the other, you know, the other uh, mistake that we often see uh, is uh, having the wrong constraints uh, in the implementation. Right? So things like integration, we still see too many companies uh, drive uh, CPQ design uh, based on the requirements from backend systems. Right? So I'll give you an example, right? Uh, uh, we have 
an order management system, we have an ERP solution that's expecting a bill of material to look like this. So this is how I'm going to present uh, the products in CPQ, right? That's the wrong, uh, that's the wrong design approach, right? You should be designing CPQ solutions based on uh, what you expect the user experience to be for the sales rep and try to optimize that user experience to give him uh, the best possible experience. Got it. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, a question that I had for you going forward, you know, I know you mentioned you know, uh, working within the technology constraints and things like that. Um, where do you see kind of the future of CPQ platforms and core to cash platforms going? You know, things like, uh, you know, AI obviously are buzzwords and things like that. Um, and you also mentioned omni-channel selling and omni-channel strategy as well. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, if those are things that you see in the future of these platforms? And if not, what, what are kind of the future trends that you see going forward in this category? Yeah, the, the first thing I'd like to touch on, that's interesting the way that you, that you phrased the question because you, you, you're talking about CPQ platforms. Right? And I think this is, a, this is an important nuance, right? Because I, uh, I think, you know, CPQ used to be applications. Uh, you know, again, that were very narrow in terms of use cases that, that, they, that they addressed. Uh, and, and then, you know, uh, CPQ evolved in order to address and become much more generic and address the needs of uh, many different industries. Uh, and, and by doing that, you know, they, they, uh, they become much more flexible in terms of being able to address the needs of you know, various industries. Uh, but I think what, what's a, a trend that we are seeing, right, demand that we are hearing from customers is they want uh, they want more uh, capabilities that are addressing their specific needs. Uh, and they kind of lost that uh, in the last few years. So I, I think a, a trend that we are seeing is CPQ solutions transforming to platforms where the platform could uh, 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 be used in order to address you know, basic capabilities, right? Uh, you know, catalog management, uh, bundling, product goals, and so on and so forth. But then on top of that platform, our vision is that um, uh, partners, right, system integrators, uh, software vendors will be able to use that platform in order to develop some capabilities that, that might address some very specific needs and some, some very specific uh, industries and very specific customer use cases. Right? So I, I do think that uh, the transformation of CPQ from an application to a platform uh, is a key trend for the future. Uh, you mentioned AI as well, uh, and, and you know we see customers uh, leveraging AI already uh, in their uh, CPQ implementations, right? So we see this, for example, uh, in pricing, right? And, and, and vendors like, like Salesforce, we have introduced uh, an AI-based um, uh, pricing recommendation uh, within uh, Salesforce CPQ. We also have some partners who uh, develop some uh, AI and ML-based uh, pricing recommendation that are integrated uh, in CPQ, uh, but I think uh, this is going to uh, grow in terms of importance and especially in configuration. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of that uh, yet. I, I think um, you know customers uh, expected that you know AI would allow them to uh, avoid having to create all of those rules uh, in their configurators, right? And AI will replace uh, all of those hard coded rules. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I don't think there's, there's a way for, for AI to do this uh, yet, and I don't think that's going to happen in the future. Uh, however, having AI uh, used as um, uh, a way to capture uh, tribal knowledge uh, from uh, you know, successful uh, salespeople or successful engineers uh, and, and explore that tribal knowledge uh, in the configuration experience, I think there's a huge demand for that, and I think that's a perfect use case for, for AI. Uh, and especially since, you know, if you look at you know, what happened in the last few years uh, in the manufacturing industry, right, the, the turnover is, 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 is huge right, uh, in the last few years. So I think, you know, having a way to, again, capture that, that trouble knowledge and being able to, uh, being able to leverage all of that uh, data that we have in order to provide the right level of recommendation uh, in the configuration experience is going to be a huge value for the customers. Um, and lastly, you mentioned omnichannel as well. I think this is a this is a this is a key uh, expectation as well from from companies, right? And and you know, uh, being able to leverage their investment uh, in CPQ, being able to leverage their catalog, their uh, configuration models, their pricing strategies, and expose that no, not only to salespeople but uh, to the sales service channel is is critical. Right? It has been a key trend for the last few years, and obviously COVID 
uh, massively accelerated that trend as well. Right. Yeah. Well, Erwan, thank you here for all of, all of the knowledge and expertise you've been able to share here. I think this has been super useful for people who are looking to evaluate CPQ solutions and are thinking about how to future-proof kind of their business with, a, with the right CPQ solution. So what I'll end off with is uh, an opportunity for a quick plug. Tell us why Salesforce CPQ uh, should be something that companies are, uh, should be evaluating seriously and where Salesforce CPQ is a good fit for businesses looking for uh, a new solution. Yeah, so you know what with uh, with Salesforce CPQ, what, what we try to do is is uh, address a lot of the pain points that, that we have seen uh, and that are not currently addressed by other CPQ vendors. And really the the, the way that, that we think about this is uh, we think holistically, right? Not just about you know capabilities like the one that we have mentioned before, uh, but we are looking at pains like you know a grace, for example, right? I've been in this space for for a long time and you know I've talked to so many customers that, that implemented a CPQ solution and that are, and that are stuck uh, in a very old release. Right? So with you know, Revenue Cloud, uh, we are making upgrades completely seamless. Right? So customers get upgraded automatically and they'll have to think about uh, um, complex you know, re-implementation if they want to benefit from a new capability that is, that is being released, for example. Uh, you know, another pain was you know, getting uh, CPQ uh, administrators uh, well, first on staff, right? So hiring those people and, and then training them uh, was hard as well, right? So we, we develop uh, a lot of material that's available publicly, right? So people can go on trailhead.com and get access to an org and, and start learning CPQ, start learning Salesforce CPQ, right? And, and we also have, you know, certification programs, right? So thousands of consultants are certified on, on Salesforce CPQ and can implement uh, Salesforce CPQ thanks to the uh, training program that, that we have uh, that we have released, uh, and the other the other thing as well that that's critical is that you know Salesforce CPQ is built uh, on the Salesforce platform. Uh, it means that natively it's integrated with all CRM, but not only you know Salesforce CRM, but also with our e-commerce solution for omni-channel types of use cases, for example, or service cloud, for example, as well. Being built on the Salesforce as well allows us to have you know a lot of flexibility. Right? We we were talking earlier about you know, gaps that you will necessarily have to address some very specific use cases that, that customers have. Uh, so being able to address those gaps with, uh, you know, capabilities uh, that are massively uh, known by uh, administrators on the Salesforce platform is, is also something that we think is, uh, that we think is critical as well. It's like, yeah, that's, that's great. And I, uh, I've personally gone through and taken a few of the trailhead courses and uh, taken a stab at my CPQ administration skills. And I'm getting there. Uh, I'll get, I'll get there one day through the whole thing, but uh, thank you, everyone. This is, this has been great. Really appreciate having you on here. Uh, and, and thanks again for, for coming on. Thank you for having me.